Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I am now answering a question from a Solomon paper from the old C4, um, which, <coughs> which corresponds to now the new P4. This is from Solomon E, and it's question number two from the Solomon E paper, and question number four from my endotopic worksheet on differentiation from the uh, P4 collection of endotopic worksheets from chapter five. <coughs> now, this question here. Um, is about implicit differentiation. You have some things which are in terms of y. You need to find dy dx, all right? And here you have, you see something in terms of y. So when you ha when you want to differentiate something like this and find dy dx, what you sh what you're not able to do really is to make y the subject of the formula and then find dy dx in the normal way. So <laughs> what we need to do is differentiate every term separately. Um, with respect to x, find dy dx for each term separately. So I'm going to differentiate the first term with respect to x, so find the differential of 4 cosine x, which is going to be negative 4 sine x. When you differentiate cosine x, you get negative sine x, so negative 4 sine x. Then I'm going to differentiate 2 sine x with respect to x. Now this is in the terms of the variable y. So what I have to do is I have to differentiate as normal, so the differential of the sine of something, becomes the cosine of the same thing. Um, but then I have to use the chain rule and multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, what's inside the function is y. So when you differentiate y, you get dy dx. So it'll be 2 times cosine y times dy dx. And when you differentiate a constant with respect, with respect to x, you're going to get 0. Okay, so this is using the chain rule. Just like, for example, if I had a cosine of, say, um, 3x squared, and I wanted to differentiate that. If I differentiated this with respect to x, I would have got, um, sorry, if it was sine, let's keep it the same. If it was differentiating the sine of 3x squared, I would have got the cosine of 3x squared, as it is, multiplied by 6 times x, the differential of what's inside the function. That's the chain rule. So that's exactly what we did here. We differentiate the sine of something became the cosine of the same thing. Then we multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function. Inside the function is the y. So it became the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. So that's why we write that dy dx at the end there. Okay, so that's like um, the reason why you do that. <coughs> when you've got something in terms of y, then you have to write dy dx at the end when you differentiate it. So now what we've got here is we've got two cosine y times dy dx is equal to 4 sine x, if you just rearrange that. And dy dx is going to be 4 sine x over cosine over 2 cosine y. Okay, now what you can't do is say this is tan of something, because these are different. The sine of an angle divided by the cosine of the same angle will give you tan of something. But we want to show this anyway, so we've got dy dx equals 2. And you've got sine x times, and I can say 1 over cosine y. And 1 over cosine y, as we know, is secant y. So then we can finally show that dy dx equals 2 sine x times secant y. And there we've shown part a. Okay, now we've got to find or we'll deal with part b. Okay, for part b it says find an equation for the tangent to the curve at the point pi over 3, pi over 6, giving your answer in the form ax plus by equals c, where a and b are integers. So now, to find the um, to find the equation of a tangent or a normal or whatever, we realize that these are straight lines, and we need two things. We need the gradient, and we need a point on the line. Well, we already found, or they already given us a point on the line, which is pi over 3, pi over 6. So that's the point on the line. We need the gradient. And the gradient, of course, is found by the gradient function, which is dy dx, which is 2 sine x sec y, which is the same as 2 sine x over cosine y. It's going to be easier to, to work out this way. So I'm going to rewrite it in this form because <coughs> it's, it's slightly easier to put the values in. So that means the gradient of the tangent to the curve is going to be 2 times the sine of the x point, which is x value of this point, which is pi over 3, over the cosine of the y value of this point, which is pi over 6. Now, this is going to give you 
the sine of pi over 3, okay, is going to give you the same value as the cosine of pi over 6, isn't it? The sine of pi over 3 is the sine of 60 degrees, and the cosine of pi over 6 is the cosine of 30 degrees, and both of those give you root 3 over 2. As we can see, if we change the calculator here to radian mode, and we say sine of pi over 3, <clears throat> gives you root 3 over 2, and also whoops, let's just do it again, cosine of pi over 3 also gives you root 3 over 2. I'm just showing you that they're both root 3 over 2. Oops, cosine of pi over 6, sorry, not pi over 3. Gives you root 3 over 2. Okay, so sine of pi over 3 and the cosine of pi over 6 give you the same value. So that means that's going to be equal to 2. Okay, as we know that the sine of pi over 3 is equal to the cosine of pi over 6. Okay, that's true for any angles that add up to 90. Okay, so the sine of 30 is equal to the sine of the cosine of 60. The sine of 10 <laughs> is equal to the cosine of 80, and so on. So we know that the gradient of the tangent is equal to 2, and that it passes through this point. So we can find the equation of the tangent quite easily now by simply using y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So you have y minus pi over 6 equals the gradient, which is 2 times x minus pi over 3. Okay. Okay, now we want to simplify this a bit. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to just expand this bracket. So I have y minus pi over 6 equals 2x minus 2 pi over 3. Now we want a and b to be integers, one in this form. So what I'll do is to get rid of the fractions, um, I will just multiply everything by 6 first, just to get rid of the fractions. I don't have to deal with fractions. So y, there will be 6y minus pi equals 12x minus 2 pi. Uh, minus 4 pi, actually. If you multiply this by 6, this is going to be 2 pi times 6 over 3. gives you 4 pi. Okay, so we multiply everything by 6. That got rid of all the fractions, and now we want the x and the y to be on the same side. So I'll, <coughs> what I'll do is I'll put 12x minus 6y and then equals a constant so 12x minus 6y is going to be equal to 3 pi minus okay now what's left to do is to simplify this and to you can see that all of these terms are divisible divisible by 3 <clears throat> so you have 4x minus 2y equals pi and this is in the required form we have um, a, B, and C are integers. A and B are integers, okay? And C is not an integer. It's going to be a... It's, it's, it's a rational number. So that's why it doesn't say A, B, and C are integers. It says A and B are integers. Okay, so here we have the answer for this question. Um, <clears throat> number four from the end of topic worksheet and number... I think it was number two from the, um, end of, from the paper E... the Solomon E paper. Other questions which are related to the Solomon E paper or from this Solomon E paper from the C4 collection can be found in the playlist in this area. Other questions from this endotopic worksheet, number five on differentiation from my P4 collection can be found over here in this playlist. And <clears throat> you can find other questions that are related to P4 differentiation in this playlist. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.